people. And if I could go back, like I said in the beginning, to my 20, 21 year old me, these are the things I would have started telling myself, you idiot, you should have started doing this crap earlier. You would have just been where you are in half the time, right? So this is my opportunity to tell, share with you guys, if you focus on these things now, you know, the compounding effect that these, you know, habits can have for you will be transformational in any and every aspect of things that you do in, in, in all your endeavors going forwards. And these principles, philosophies, ideas, habits, whatever you want to call them, it doesn't matter what industry, what path you go in, these are habits that are denominators for all people that have found success in every way, shape, or form, from business to relationships to, you know, you know to athletes across the board, Right. The number one biggest thing that I've, I've certainly um, pour so much time in right now is growing me, right? Putting time into growing yourself. You are the biggest investment that you can ever pour anything into, right? And, and I remember when we were getting going and, and having some success in, in our online businesses, me and my wife were working together. Um, that was a big proponent of that company's um, outlook was personal development, right? Was reading 10 pages of a good book a day, or, you know, I do a lot. Of, I, I read uh, two pages, I fall asleep. So I do most of my learning through Audible, right? Or listening to podcasts. But starting to feed your brain with positive stuff. You know, today's world, especially right now, you can't turn a news channel on, even the sports center, without everyone talking about what we're currently going through with COVID. It's, it's all negative, and it's, but it's reality. We have to address it. We're all making decisions on every aspect of our life and without a piece, without a part of it. Um, but, you know, you have to protect what you're putting into your brain, right? And as I started to create the habits of just listening to audiobooks, listening to positive podcasts, I started to notice a shift in the thoughts that I was having. When I was frustrated for the two years I was out, not going, you know, out from closing my business, I remember every morning I woke up and hopped in the shower, I was just thinking still of frustration, negativity. I can't believe the situation we're in. We're in a financial debt. You know, how are we ever going to get out of this? How did this happen to me? And it was just a poor, mean, negative attitude. And those thoughts dictated decisions and actions that went on the rest of the day. I started my morning off with a negative 20 minute, you know, shower where it just projected and changed everything the rest of the day, right? I wasn't a positive influence for people when I'm already in a negative tailspin. And I started to be reawoken again through this, through our new journey on just the importance of, you know, working on yourself and, 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 and doing some personal development. And over time, and it took some time, it wasn't a day, it wasn't a week, but after a period of time, I started to notice changes in my thoughts. And then those thoughts changed some of the decisions I made throughout the course of the, and the things I started to pursue. And I would notice some of those subtle changes. And so it, it made me want to feed myself more, right? So that became a daily habit, right? So when I you know, go in the shower or when I'm in the car, I have something plain. Like I literally, if you go in my shower, I have like, I think it's supposed to be for your sink to put silver in. It's a suction cup little thing that I just put my phone in. And when I'm there, I'm listening as I'm getting ready in the morning, I'm listening to 15, 20 minutes of a great podcast or an audio book or whatever. And I'm starting my day off with positive thoughts and ideas that get my brain in a more productive state, thinking about things that I could do that, be, that are going to be advantageous towards the things that we're going after, right? And so, you know, the amount of time you can spend in growing yourself and feeding yourself information, there's endless information out there, you know, especially whether you go on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook or Audible or whatever. I mean, you can self-teach yourself anything. And there's people that are literally giving information away for free. You don't have to pay for half of it, right? Most people that pay have pay to play type of information also have free content on YouTube. You can learn anything from everybody. So I think the most brilliant and successful people are also the greatest students out there, right? They are constantly feeding their brain. I mean, you look at the post I see where it talks about how many books, you know, Bill Gates reads or Elon Musk reads, you know, I mean, listen, you start copying these people um, and you do similar things, you're going to start to see differences and changes and get, go into the direction that you want to go in. Um, you know, I think about 
basketball. I'm a big basketball fan. Um, you know, there's three main skill sets in basketball, right? You got to dribble, shoot, and pass. And you can say rebounding and steals, but really the core aspects are dribble, shooting, and passing, right? The first things you're taught. And you think about a basketball player starting off in just elementary school and, and then an NBA player, they're still using the same three skill sets, right? But what they're doing is they're perfecting and mastering those skill sets. They're learning how to dribble better. They're learning how to shoot better, learning how to pass better. But it's the same skills. They're just consistently going back and polishing that game up, right? And so whatever area of interest that you go into, you're going to identify the skill sets that you need to, to learn in order to be effective. And then you're just going to continue practicing those skills over and over and over again learning from others, right? So you have to really have a thirst to learn, right? As long as you keep growing yourself, the things around you will grow. And I can go back to different chapters of my life and know and see the absolute different outcomes from when I was pouring into myself and when I wasn't, when I was feeding my brain positive stuff and when I was telling myself negative stuff. And so that self-talk, those thoughts, you know, have a tremendous impact on you. Another big thing that goes kind of in conjunction with that is you are the sum of the five people you hang out with most, right? I grew up, um, you know, like I said, in Syracuse, and I grew up with a good circle of buddies, and we liked to have it. We, we had a good time, and probably too good of a time, and probably one of the best things I ever did, I don't think I knew at that moment, was when I graduated from college, I left that city. And thank God I did, because if I didn't, I would probably be in a much different situation because a lot of my friends that I did hang out with growing up that were having a lot of fun still are having a lot of fun and don't really have much to show for what the last 20 years has been for them, right? And so I noticed that my life was different at different points depending on who I hung out with, who I ran with, who I associated with, right? You have the choice to choose who you want to rub shoulders with, right? And, you know, it's obvious that, listen, hang out with people that have the things that you want to have. You're going to start to pick up their behaviors, their thoughts, their ideas, their habits. You're going to start to, you're just going to become guilty by association with whatever group it is that you hang out with. But that's such a critical part in, in your journey is who you decide to rub shoulders with, right? You're always going to have some people that are just going to tell you nothing can work and you don't have it and are just always going to have a negative pessimistic attitude because listen, we're in a society where it's just people are prone to be negative, right? The news is always negative. People are talking about the weather stinks and the traffic is awful and works. I mean, it's an easy, simple conversation that everyone can relate to, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the right path to go, right? You want to find people that are just look that are going the opposite direction this is the minority and this is where it's like hey you know what it's good to be part of the minority here because the minority in this world are people that are forward thinking are not wasting their time on the negative stuff because they can't control it they're focusing their efforts and thoughts on the things they can control right so who you surround yourself with is critical and you have the choice to do that does that mean i don't hang out with my buddies from home the times i go back to syracuse I hang out, we have a good time, we have go through a lot of memories, but when it comes to me and my career or me and my relationships and that stuff, I'm very picky on who I spend my time with. There's a lot of people I've met over the years that I think are great people, but as I hung out with them, I just noticed how negative they were and how their outlook was. And whether it's intentional or accidental, over time I just felt like I just, I stopped, I'd move away, right? Cause I'm like, I just don't, I don't have time to, entertain those conversations and that stuff. I want to talk to people that are challenging me to think bigger and better. And, and, you know, those people are always welcoming other people in to share their ideas and their outlook. You know, you just got to find them. So that's a really important thing. Um, staying outside your comfort zones. Uh, you know, you're always going to be in the same spot if you don't push yourself to do something new, right? Um, I heard this a long time ago in my career that said the second you stop feeling the butterflies in your stomach is the first sign you're starting to fail or you're getting complacent, right? You have to embrace the butterflies in your stomach. If you're not pushing yourself out there, you're not moving, right? You've got to learn to live outside your comfort zones. The more new things you can try and do, the absolute better it's going to have on all, on, 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 on all aspects, right? In, in, you know, thirst as many experiences as you possibly can, right? Um, and it's tough. It's challenging at times. But I look and go, the, the things that I went through over the last 20 years started off very uncomfortable. 
right? Going out and going on my first day of sales and being told no all day long, no one telling me yes, that was very tough. It was tough the first day, the second day, the second month. It, you know, it still was always challenging. And so, but I realized I had to learn how to um, get excited about that and not look at it as um, scary or uncomfortable, but realize that those nervous feelings were also an indication that I'm going in the right direction. I've got to, it's like, I got to run towards that light, right? Because if I want to be in a different spot six months, a year from now, five years from now, I've got to chase the things that are uncomfortable, right? Um, because if I don't, I can guarantee myself that I'm going to be in a very similar situation a year from now, five years from now, if I don't push myself out of there. And so that's something that I've had to learn how to condition and change my thought process on not to be afraid or fearful of those things that are uncomfortable, but to learn how to embrace that stuff, right? To challenge myself, to make that kind of a, a competition between me and me is to figure out, can I figure out how to do this, right? Um, so I think that's a big thing. Uh, a big daily, you know, building a great daily routine is probably something later in my life in the past probably five years I put a lot of effort into is this, you know, counting this this evolution of me was a brick by brick layer, right? And it's like, I'm still thirsting to figure out how can I up my daily game or my daily routine? Um, so a couple of things that I think are very important that I 100% attribute a lot of our success over the later years to some of these basic daily habits. And I'm not the first person that's gonna tell you guys these things. As you learn and listen to other people, you're gonna hear these things over and over and over again, right? Once again, I'm just copying others that had something that I wanted to get to and trying to copy their habits. But a couple things, um, setting goals, right? But there's, to me, I'm a very visual person. So there's an element or a layer of setting goals that I really put a lot of pride into is I write everything down, I hang things up everywhere, right? And I would probably walk into my shower, but if you went into my shower, you would see fluorescent flashcards. You know what, we're going in. Well, I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna show you some of this stuff. Okay, I guess you know, we're gonna, we're gonna go a little outside the box. So you guys are gonna take a little bit of a, a journey with me. My wife's probably gonna go, are you kidding? Yeah, she's shaking her head. But yeah, you know, and don't mind the dirty shower. But here, if you see all these cards right here, there's some on the other side, right? If you look on my mirrors, there's cards, there's writing all over the mirror. So um, one of the things that I've done for years is, you know, whether it's goals, whether it's things I want to improve on personally, whether it's things I need to remind myself of or who I want to be or how I want to change, I write that stuff and I put it up on, you know, I put them in areas in my house that I'm going to see consistently, okay? And the reason why I do that is I think everybody has goals. Um, I don't think there's anybody out there in the world that doesn't say, hey, I wish I had more of this or wish I was here. But why do so many people fail at getting to them? And I think the honest reason is, is life is busy and crazy, right? The fountain of life in the day will run all day long, right? You can go in the day having nothing planned, but be busy all day long and never put any time into what it is that you're trying, that you really want to pursue, right? You know, I'm at a point where I have three kids and we're now virtual schooling and, you know, and, and being a husband and all the stuff that go on. I'm like, there's not, I, I could fill an entire day without actually having anything planned, right? And that's the problem is, does life run you or do you run your life, right? Does day run you or do you run your day? And I think people, as much as they have things they want to do, they forget day one, day two, right? And next thing you know, it's like that, that you know, um, January, you know, new goal they're going to set, right? Within weeks, most people fail. It's like 90% of people fail in the first like two or three weeks of their New Year's resolution. And I think it's because they forget. And so for me, having those visual triggers, that's what I call them, whether it's pictures of places or things you want, whether it's cards like I have, I put them everywhere. They're on our fridge, they're in my shower, they're on the mirrors, they're in the area that I meditate, they're where we work out, right? They're constant, just little taps on the shoulder going, don't forget. And seeing those things also start generating thoughts and ideas each day about, oh, yes, what am I going to do to work towards this, right? So that was one of the things over the past probably four or five years that we put a lot of time in. Every year, me and my wife go away for two or three days in December, and we plan out our entire year in all aspects of community, finances, business, relationships, parenting. And we write down these outlines and goals and all we, and then I'll, then we take them and put them into these cards and put them up everywhere. And I'm telling you, ever since I started doing that, the amount of things I actually stuck with and accomplished because of just those daily taps and those visual reminders, 
changed everything, right? I remember three years ago, I tried I, meditating was a new daily routine I wanted to bring in. And I failed miserably at it. Like I just, you know, after a couple of weeks, I was just like, ah, oh, man, I haven't meditated in like two weeks. Like, forget it. I, I you know, I just kind of lost the, like my, my momentum. And, and then this year, I'm like, okay, I want to learn. I, I got it. I want to add this to my game, right? I think it's important for me mentally to just, you know, bring my mind to a calming place each day as I get my morning started, right? And I see so many people doing that. I'm like, I got to do this, right? But I had to figure out like, what the heck did I, why did that go wrong two years ago? And I started to uncover some of the things. And it was just like, I didn't have a designated place to go to, right? Somewhere I wasn't distracted by my kids or whatever. So now I literally have a chair in my closet that I know I could close and lock my door that no one can interrupt me, right? So I found just a different atmosphere and a location I'm going to go into, you know, five, six times a day going in and out of my closet. And I have a headset so I can't hear any outside noise and get distracted. I got no excuse, right? So I just changed some of the modified, some of the things to set myself up for more success to accomplish that goal. I got that idea from someone, I, a book I was reading where someone said he wanted to learn how to play the guitar and after a year, never picked the guitar out of the case. And then so one day he said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take the guitar out of the case and I'm gonna put it right next to my couch. So when I'm sitting there after work on my couch at night, there's nothing holding me back. And the only thing that was holding him back from playing the guitar was, was in the case in his bedroom and he was too lazy to go up and get it, right? So sometimes little modifications can help you accomplish those goals. But the visual triggers, telling you for me was is is incredibly important to have those things up in places where you see them over we need to be reminded we need to remind ourselves and when you do see those things you'll start to notice that you'll start making decisions to do a little bit of something each day to some of those things and i'll keep you on that journey um plan out your days um that's something that as We've gotten busier in different aspects of our business, having and playing different roles as a parent and all that stuff. We've, the, the more you plan, um, you're a lot more effective. Um, and there's elements of planning that are very important. There's a, you know, you may hear it or you learn about it sometimes called Pareto's principle, which is kind of like the 80-20 rule, right? But one of the things I went to a John Maxwell private, you know, training a couple of years ago, and I, this is a big takeaway for me, was his planning. And, and, and it wasn't, it was not only just kind of, write a list of things you need to do every day, but then organize it based on what gives you the biggest return, right? For whatever it is you're going after. And then discipline yourself to do those things in that order, right? Because a lot of times, even if people make a list, they'll cross off the easiest things they can do just for a sense of accomplishment. But it's a false sense of accomplishment because a lot of the things that are easy have very little return. So you're going, I got a list of 10 things, I got seven of them done, but seven of those things don't really move the needle for whatever it is you're doing because we have a natural tendency to do the easy stuff first and get out of the way. But by that time, by the time you've got to get to the important things, you're not your best you anymore. The day is already worn on you. And so that really taught me that you go, you know what, I'm screwing this all up. Like I'm going to, you know, I don't know why I'm in the same position. I'm working my butt off every day, but I'm doing the simple crap, right? I'm doing the crap that isn't going to help me grow. It's not in the sales part of my business. It's in the customer side of our business. And yeah, I need to do both, but I need to be in the, I need to spend, I need my best me in the growth side of my business. I also got to live in the management side of my business because every, every company, you know, you got you got the growth part of your business and you have the management part of your business. Different departments fall in there, but to attack effectively, the things are going to take the most of you. Um, that's I, I, I try to do those things first, right? So organizing, planning your day and organizing it effectively based on what thing is going to give you the best return uh, to the least and doing in that order makes a big difference in terms of what you can accomplish in moving the needle. Um, take care of yourself, right? I started to get a lot more into exercising and not so much to look different, but to just feel different, right? Feeling a sense of accomplishment, you know, good for the brain, you know, just it helped me kind of go at my day with a different attack and a different sense of feeling and accomplishment, right? So, you know, you don't have to go and, and lift weights for hours, but just do something like go walk for 20 minutes in the morning, right? Or run or get on a bike, right? Just getting the blood flowing, getting some time just to kind of have some me time. And that exercise is really good for your body, good for your brain. And I noticed the big difference is I added that brick to the daily routine. Um, and then one of the things I do now that I, I'm really excited that I've done this year. So when I wake up in the morning, I typically will get ready and take a shower and I'll listen to, you know, 15 minutes of whatever I'm listening to, a podcast or whatever book I'm in, right? And then afterwards, I'll go into my closet and I'll meditate. And then after I meditate, I have a, I have a daily gratitude journal, right? And in that journal, I write five things down that I'm grateful for that happened the day before, Right. 
and, and then I write 10 different goals or things I want to see happen for me in my life, right? Like, and, and, or things I just need to become better. So one of them is I'm an exceptional father and husband, right? Uh, another one is we help lots of people, right? Um, our kids have successful mindsets. So these are things I'm writing down over and over and over again. But the gratitude part of that is when you start getting a habit of writing down things you're grateful every day, you start going through your day now noticing and recognizing and remembering those things going, oh, I'm going to write this down in my journal tomorrow. And when your mindset is focused on things that you're grateful for, it's not that negative crap just starts to dodge you. It happens, but you're not dwelling, getting hung up on it, right? And that, that was a big thing for me. Like when COVID hit, my, one of my uh, commitments to myself is I wanted to go, I wanted to come out of COVID better than I came into COVID. So there's a couple things I did. How we even got connected on this call was from a group that I joined online that had a bunch of positive personal development coaching and training that I joined to just get extra coaching and insight. Uh, I took an online class at Yale on the science of well-being. Uh, which is really cool just learning about the science of well-being and how you think and how you observe and all that stuff, right? Um, I, I, I started, you know, adding, um, there's a, 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 some of you guys may not know, there's a guy named Wim Hof who has this breathing and cold therapy that is, you know, really kind of world-renowned and a lot of athletes use it. And I started adding his exercise to my game. So I, I, I was just, once again, all this is working and improving on me. And indirectly is also positively affecting the business, my role as a father or a husband, the different investment inve you know, endeavors, all the different aspects of things that we're into now. I'm a better me to step up to the plate on every one of those things. So that was obviously th those morning routines are, are important. Uh, a last couple of things, because I know we're kind of getting to that, that break, um, is bring value to others, right? Serve people, right? Um, you get to where you want to go by helping other people get to where they want to go first. So you've got to really um, have a passion or a thirst to helping other people. Even getting on this call, this is awesome. Like I love this and and hopes that hey, maybe there's some you know stories or things I've learned that could help people. To me, there's no greater reward in that, right? And it's not doing it with any expectation of any type of return. It's paying it forward. But I think when you can provide value to anybody, as many people as you touch, you know, it's karma. Things come back your way. You never know who you're going to meet or who you did something nice for. So I'm always really trying to be very aware of how can I bring value to more and more people, right? And I think the most successful people, like you look at like a Tony Robbins, right? I mean, obviously massive success, but he really does pride himself in helping other people and providing value and, and, and helping people get through troubling and, and challenging situations in life, right? Um, and, and I admire that and I admire people that do that. And I think those that um, have that abundance of wanting to help people get it all back in return and then some, right? So find ways to bring value. And this is important as you are going through your journey of you know, your business or whatever it is you're gonna do, some of the ways to find success is finding people and finding ways to help them first. You know, reciprocation is one of the seven influences of persuasion, which is a great book if you ever wanna, you know, if you're in the kind of the sales or persuasion type of world, that's a book called The Seven Influences of Persuasion. And one of the chapters is on the influence of reciprocation, right? When you do something nice for somebody, there's automatically an instant obligation for them to return the favor. And we all know that when someone says something for you, you're like, oh man, now I gotta, now I gotta, I gotta do something back to them, right? But that's in a way, it's providing value to somebody that at some point may be a chip that gets returned back to you. So really pride yourself in trying to do things for other people would not necessarily return, but if you get in the habit of helping other people out, when there's a point in time you may need something, you're gonna have a big network of people that are gonna be willing to go out of your way to do it for you because they want to, right? Um, so I think that's really cool. The last thing uh, I'll touch on is be smart with your money, especially early on, right? Um, there was points in the early aspects of my um, business that we had some really good years and I was making some pretty good money, especially as a young 21, 22 year old kid. Um, I wish I did better things with my money, right? Because it didn't, it didn't consistently come. There was years as good and there's years that all seemed to disappear sometimes, right? Um, but I wish I was a little smarter in, in take the money I made and finding ways for it to continue making money. And there's all different types of ways and I don't have to go through all the ideas of doing it, but um, 
you know, I know how I was. When I, I wanted the nice car. I wanted the nice stuff. I wanted to, you know, pay for this and pay for that. And geez, I wish I could go back and, and have taken that money and put it into something else, right? You'll have plenty of time to do those things. But early on, you have the compounding effect of a lot of years ahead of you. If I would have started putting money away when I was 21 years old, I can't imagine where I'd be financially having those extra 10 years, 15 years before I started to really get my head out of my ass and go, you know what? I need to start heavily investing. But I didn't really start heavily investing until probably 35, 36 years old. I missed 15 years of compounding interest, you know, in different endeavors I could put money into that probably would have put me in a lifetime of a different situation now, even with the success we've had. So even if you don't have a lot, just putting a little bit of stuff away right now. I mean, you can read some books or get on the online and just look at the difference of putting a hundred bucks away a month, you know, now at the age of 20 or 21 and what that means 30, 40 years from now versus waiting till when I started, you know, you could put in a fraction of what I've already invested and have two or three times what I will have at the, you know, at the point in time of retirement or whatever the, whenever you want to kind of cash out. So be smart with your money. The other thing to be invest into with your money is invest in yourself, right? Get education, or get yourself in front of people, whether there's opportunities to go to conferences to learn, don't shy up on spending money to grow and learn yourself. You always will get a massive return um, on the money that you put into learning for yourself, right? There's no shortage uh, of that. So I think that's a big thing if I could go back to my 20s. I'm like, oh man, geez, all those incredibly compounding years that I did not take advantage of. If I could go back, I'd do it again, right? So anyways, um, I know you're, I know Angel, I go, you guys are going to go do a break and then we can do some Q&As, but hopefully that gives you some things. And obviously through any questions you got, I can maybe give you some more specifics on your guys' situations. But that's a nutshell of my story. Those are the things that I've learned, some of the mistakes that I've made um, that uh, when I look back and, you know, I'm telling my 20-year-old my self to uh, take some of those things a lot more seriously um, you know, that, that's what I can offer to you guys. Those are the things that I, I really look at that no matter what role, uh, what industry, what path you're going to go in, those things don't change, right? Those are the foundations. And it's funny because I teach people in the, in the, in the industry that we're in, I spend less time teaching, you know, the aspects of our industry and more times teaching the importance of these things that are having a great morning routine and investing in yourself, be conscious of who you spend time with, because, that really is the mover and shaker. You know, you think about, you know, some of the best college coaches in basketball or football, you know, when they're in the off season, they're talking to the other top coaches, you know, in their respected sports. They're, they're connecting and networking. Top business people do masterminds and get together and CEOs and industries and they talk behind the scenes, you know. Um, these are the things that people are doing no matter what role they go on that are really the building blocks and the dominators of their success. Well, thank you so much, Paul, for showing those golden nuggets with everyone. Um, I'm definitely going to have questions for the Q&A session. Um, yeah. Yeah, and also I want to give a special thanks for every single person who joined us today as well. Um, it's pretty awesome to see all of you back again. Um, some new people, definitely. Um, so I'll go ahead and pass it to Alexis. Um, it's a small intermission, but definitely going to show a little bit of what's to come with Evolution of Leadership. And, yeah, so go ahead, Alexis. Okay, awesome. So um, let's see here. Can you do me a favor, Angel, and show uh, show them the poster for next meeting? Yeah. Perfect. So, let's do a share screen. Cool. Canva. And I'll, I'll just have you speak. Um, uh, yeah, um, I'll have you speak about, um, what do you call it? Uh, the speaker, because I know you're you're more familiar with him toward the end, but I'll just introduce it. Um, yeah, cool. So, right. actually, yeah, let me so, see. um, yeah, I'll, I'll just get this one. All right, perfect. Um, cool, cool. So, so I'll um, just, I'll just briefly, I'll, I'll talk about, uh, it's, so this is pretty much the next, uh, speaker. We're going to have Angel talk more in depth about him, uh, Kevin Turner. So, um, yeah. We're going to have another meeting as well next Thursday. 
Um, and we'll talk more about that at the end. Um, I also wanted to talk at the end more on e the, um, the upcoming uh, things. I'm like the uh, two week challenge we're gonna have uh, soon. So that's coming soon. I'll just introduce it as well as the feedback uh, for the event. So we have surveys for that as well. So we'll have one survey uh, for Paul and then we'll have one survey uh, for uh, the viewers your, um, yourselves. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Thank you for sharing. Awesome. So I'll go ahead and talk a little bit on Kevin Turner. So um, just like Paul, uh, we met Kevin Turner from the, fa the Facebook group, the Rise Up, I believe. Yeah. And um, Kevin Turner also has a history of leadership. He worked as a juvenile and corrections officer. And he said through leadership, um, he learned how to become better and better relate to the inmates there in, in regards to talking to them with humanity. So it's pretty awesome. We're also going to have him join. And also, if Paul wants to hop on this one next Thursday, um, definitely can build that connection up too. Uh, we definitely want to improve the networks of everyone here. And yeah, so that's pretty much what we're going to have um, next Thursday. So let's go back to the Zoom. So we'll leave, uh, I guess we'll have the cool. Q&A for you guys, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so um, does anyone have any questions for Paul? Um, he said a lot of things. Um, I know that um, they're definitely very applicable. So yeah, does anyone have any questions? And do not come all at once, please. Who's gonna break the ice first? Just real anyone? quick. Um, there's a there's a leadership principle that sets there's power in going first because you set you set the you set the tone for people. Who wants to break it? Any question? Yes, oh, my favorite you. color is. Well, thank you <laughs> for coming through. And I feel like uh, the affirmations, the things that you have written down by your shower, the place where you took the shower. I yeah. think what you have on there, it really connects with me on a deeper level. So I would like yeah. to ask you, what kind of things do you have written down on there? Like what kind of spe yeah. specifically? So uh, a couple different categories. So, um, you know, and this comes kind of starts, it starts with our yearly planning when we do kind of a little bit of a getaway and, and uh, you know, reflect on past year and, and what we want to do forward. So uh, a lot of areas are family. So things we want to do for our family, things we want to do with our kids. Um, you know, I think a couple of them are keep my phone down more, spending more time outside playing with kids, uh, playing with the, doing sports and activities with them. Um, uh, obviously, another one is just, you know, financial goals that we have, money we want to invest, uh, companies we want to invest into. Is now, it's one of the things we've done over the past year is started to do a little bit of angel investing and investing into different companies. And, and that's more just been from wanting to learn. I mean, most of these companies are companies that are out in your guys' neck of the woods and in the Silicon Valley area. So just a lot of it's just learning new ideas and, 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 and betting on smarter people than me that are taking brilliant ideas and, and seeing if they can run into it. So, you know, we have different investment, um, you know, goals. Uh, of course, our business, um, our marriage, you know, goals and things we want to do to just continue to work and improve on our marriage. Um, community goals, things we're kind of doing for the community. So each card kind of represents a certain category. And within that category, we'll, we'll each have our own kind of breakdown of bullet points of things that we're trying to accomplish um, and do, right? Um, one of my goals this year was to train or speak to, you know, younger people um, outside of, you know, the coaching and training I do in my own industry, in my own profession, right? Um, and you guys just helped me accomplish and put my first check mark on that goal, right? Which is a very kind of somewhat accidental how that even came into play, right? I joined in that Rise Up group as part of my Get Better plan in the COVID session. I saw, you know, a gentleman post, uh, put up a post asking for potential speakers. And I was like, hey, you know what? That's something that I, it's on my list of stuff I got to do this year. And I said, sure, I will. And then obviously that led me to you guys, which has given me this opportunity and platform to kind of pay forward um, you know, my learning, right? So it's one of those things where the universe, what you put out, attracts the same things back. And sometimes you don't know how you're going to necessarily get there, 
but then you go, holy crap, like here I am. I'm, I'm talking to a bunch of young, smart people. And, uh, and that was a goal. And I didn't know exactly the path, right? And, and on that, I, I, I kind of bring up a, uh, something I share a lot with a lot of people is that, you know, it's important to know where you are and it's important to know where you want to go, but you don't necessarily know everything in between that, right? You can drive from New York to California in the middle of the night, only seeing 30 feet ahead of you, which is the headlights, right? And that's a much like life, where you are today, where you want to go. It's important to know what the final destination is so you know if you're on track and you're lost, but you don't need to know every single, you know, step along the way. What you need to know is what do I need to do today or this week? And then that will open up the next 30 feet, and the next 30 feet, and the next 30 feet. But, you know, those cards is, and, and just that, that specific thing of wanting to speak outside of my profession, uh, whether it was going to, you know, a college and speaking to kids or whatever, I didn't really know what the path was. And I probably could put more time into attacking and pursuing that path. But strangely enough, that seeing that on a car every day, somehow the universe has brought this opportunity um, to me, which... Um, those things I noticed happen so much more when, you know, you, you put things out there and you put those visual triggers or, you know, thoughts are things. So um, you can control, you know, the things that you want to see and the things that you picture, you know? Um, so that's a good question. Those triggers are uh, probably one of the most important things I teach in any of my teachings to people, because I think that's one of the big things that is, um, has resulted in our success. You know, that's really wonderful, Paul, because as you were answering, you actually mentioned something else that I was really interested in. You mentioned a Joe investing, and uh, Angela and I are actually really into investing. Yeah. And, uh, I believe Alex is also getting into it. So I would like to ask you, because I want to do angel investing in the future. Yeah. How, what, what were the steps you take to get into being an angel investor? And uh, yeah. how has it been for you so far? Um, I'm a year and a half into it, right? And so the, the handful of the companies that I've invested into, um, it, it's, it's an investment bucket, right? It's not the first. Uh, it, it's, I've learned that um, I have to have other buckets filled, you know, I have a good investment portfolio. It's not that if I, this is, if I had $10,000 to my name, I wouldn't be investing it into a company. It's, it's, it, it has a risky element into it, right? But it also has potentially massive returns even more than the market can have. But I think you have to be in a certain financial position. Um, I, I'm, I'm not in the heart of Southern Cal, or Northern Cal and Silicon Valley where the world of startups really, it, that's where the heartbeat is, right? So my path of even um, taking that journey was one, I, I read a book about angel investing by Jason Calcanis, who's one of the best investors or well-renowned investors there is in the Silicon Valley area. And, uh, and he's got a syndicate where small people like me can just put little lumps of money into it in a collective group. And then that syndicate then invest into a company as a whole, a whole network of people, right? So I joined a syndicate because that, you know, Jason, who runs that syndicate, has got a whole team of people that is vetting companies and has accelerator programs and, and, and has the, the wherewithal. For me, it's just another bucket of investment to put a little bit of money in every year um, where I don't really expect any type of return. Maybe I get lucky one day, but it would be years down the road before if any of them really, you know, became a unicorn or a hit, it would be five or 10 years after the fact I put a little bit of money in, right? But I, I it was a fun hand to play, right? It was money that I didn't care if I lost, but I also really liked it more for the opportunity to learn about what's happening, right? And and and, and make an investment into smarter people than me, right? Uh, but a lot of it was more just learning some of the cool stuff that people are coming up with, right? And the ideas that are just off the charts that we won't really hear about for another five years or 10 years before they really get big, Right. Um, so that was a kind of a personal passion of something that I wanted to do. Uh, but I also think there's a point in time. I think you have to have certain financial criteria to uh, be accepted into a syndicate, whether it's how much you earn a year or how much you have a year, which is important because I think it, you know, puts um, some limits on people getting in maybe a little bit too early. Right. So, but it's, it's a fun world to be in. Right. And, and I started off by learning, by reading some books 
and listening to some podcast and getting with people that are already investing and you know learning and, and surrounding myself around people that are way more knowledgeable about me. So the investments I've made are mainly listening, learning about the company and calling a couple of people and going, what are your thoughts? You've been doing this way longer than I have. Is this something you would put a couple bucks in, right? So I'm trying to cheat my way through that. It's, a, it, it, it's fun to learn, you know, what goes on, right? What's the group's name again? Who did, uh, for the syndicate? Uh, it's Jason Calcanis' syndicate. Jason Calcanis? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So if you look, he's got a podcast. He's got a couple of podcasts, right? And I listen to some of his podcasts. It's an area that I listen, you know, to because it's an area that I'm putting time and, and uh, money into. Um, but he's got, uh, he's got two different podcasts. Well, there's uh, actually probably more than two. So, um, I've got a lot of podcasts. This Week in Startups is one of them. And Calcanis, C-A-L-A-C-A-N-I-S. Um, he's got another one uh, called All In, which is him and the three other, you know, very successful Silicon Valley guys. Um, that talk just about what's going on in the world. So I like listening to people that are just so much smarter than me, you know, and just get different perspectives on things. You never want to be the smartest person in the room. If you're the smartest person in the room, you, you need to leave the room, right? And if you need an idea of what to do, a piece of advice I got early in my 20s was someone told me, and I was actually interviewing this person, right? And the individual said, my grandfather told me a long time ago, if you want to figure out how to make a lot of money, Go to a party, sit in the middle of the room, and overhear the conversations that are going on. Most people are complaining. If you could figure out how to fix any of their problems, you could probably make a lot of money. And, you know, I mean, listen, the highest paid professions are people that fix other people's problems. Doctors, lawyers, financial advisors, psychologists, you know, business owners. So that was interesting. Fix, and, and, and even in angel investing, right? These are, you know, the ideas that have really hit are people that are fixing a solution, that are solving a pain point, right? That people are looking for an alternative to. I mean, look at where we are right now. The ideas that are going to come out of this period of time, right? The companies that are emerging right now and are just, you know, on the right side of COVID, but the ideas and things that will emerge, there's, with, with bad, there always comes some good too. And as much as there's a lot of sadness and stuff going on, there is a hell of a lot of innovation that's happening because of it. Uh, it will be better, that, you know, down the road because of this, you know, because of some of that innovation. So it's fun to just kind of hear what's going on there. Other questions? Yeah. Oh, I think I'd like to have this up first. I had it first or you had it first? Take it. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, it's interesting you say that the the portion of like if you if you're the smartest person in the room, get out. I I don't know if that was you that told me that. If it is, it worked because <laughs> I remember. <laughs> uh, awesome. Um, but I am a little bit curious too on on the investing portion. I know it's uh, it's um, just because like my reality right now of um, of managing um, a portfolio is like. Uh, what do I spend? Like, it's either two things that I would, I would uh, like understand spending money on. It's one, uh, self-improvement and then two, uh, not having it in a savings cause that's dumb, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but having it so that it grows while I'm sleeping, but I know that it's not going to be a lot just cause of, you know, I have like 2k, right. But yeah. I just think like my mindset right now, maybe it's faulty. Uh, I don't know. Um, but it is like, um, you know, what am I going to, what am I going to have either than a, uh, a, uh, um, the ability to waste it on something, you know, it's, it's just there. Yeah. I mean, listen, there's a lot of things you can invest into, invest in yourself into learning, turning that 2k into, you know, opportunities to learn. You can invest into a business and starting something and getting something off the ground and having a little bit of capital to do that with, um, you know, people invest in the real estate, people invest in the market, right? I mean, I think, uh, and I don't think, I think it's just, it's very situational, depends on the person. I don't think you step into anything without getting some coaching and some advice from people. Uh, if you're going to go in the market, obviously, um, it's personal preference. I'm not a big fan of the financial investing world because they all have, you know, agendas and are paid differently. If you ever, 
invest, find a fiduciary, someone that's legally bound to, you know, service you and your money in the best interest of you and not them and their, their firm and all that type of stuff. But, you know, Tony Robbins has some good books too, just gives you basics on that. Unshakable is one of them, which is one of the first books I read when I started to invest. Um, you know, so that's a good one. Um, I'm actually going back and I'm reading, um, um, let me go back. I'm just going to scroll through my audible. Um, you know, money master of the game is another, you know, famous Tony Robbins one. Um, I, just, I, I, you know, get educated, you know, get with people that are smart with already are, are smart with their money and, and ask five different people and get five different opinions, right? What to do with it, you know, but do something with it because, you know, 2000 bucks today growing in something in a, in some sort of positive return, whether it's the market or whatever, it, it may not seem like a lot, but boy, it's when you see what, you know, 20 or 30 years can do to 2000 bucks, you'll, you know, you, you, yeah. Mine will be blown, right? And it, and I think yeah. more than the money, it's it's starting the right habits early, right? That's what I didn't yeah. do. I didn't start the right habits of saving something, right? If you're like, wow, it's only 20 bucks a week. It's not even worth saving. Bull crap. It is because it compounds. But more importantly, getting in the habit of saving is really an important thing to do, right? Um, it's something great for yourself, but something great that you'll pass on to eventually your kids down the road too. One of the biggest issues we have is the lack of financial literacy there is in our educational system. No one's teaching in high school or even college unless you're a financial major how money works, how credit works, all that stuff. So by the time people even get to a point of learning on it, they're only learning because they're already in a financial pinch, right? Too much debt, too many loans they got to pay back, et cetera, right? So um I, and that's an easy, I mean, you can go online all day on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and just watch people's videos. And you have to act in that immediately, but just start learning and educating yourself and start creating the habits. That, the, the better you create some of these habits or saving money or daily routines and that stuff early on, um, you'll look back five years from now and you'll credit out, uh, you, you'll be blown away where you end up going, right? And where, what you end up becoming based on just a lot of these things I went over today. And it may go, well, this has nothing to do with what my journey or what my business I'm going to do with. But you got to remember, that's all secondary, right? You are the heartbeat of whatever it is that you're going to venture out and do, right? And so the more you're strengthening your heart, the more you're going to kick that blood out farther and farther and grow and improve the things around you, right? So, um, you know, and those are the things that are going to lead you to have the right thoughts that will lead to the right actions and decisions to make that will lead to, that will go in the direction of things you want to pursue. And I don't, and I think people have a tough time realizing how those things correlate to success in whatever business or endeavor they're in. But they, but you know, the smart people or the people who just have blind faith and trust and go, I guess everyone keeps saying the same things. So there's got to be something to it. This somehow is going to help me run my restaurant or this it absolutely does, though, and you start to realize that you have more. This has more to do with it than anything else you do, right? Um, so get in those right habits. I, you know, that's a big thing. Is you guys are still at um, a great age where even saving a little bit of something. I mean, ten years from now, when you're still young, you're going to go, "Holy crap!" You're going to be ahead of ninety nine point nine percent of people that you know. And you know, as you get a little bit older, you realize that being cool is it, it, people, you know, being cool is not being broke. Right. Um, and when you're younger, you're being cool is showing that you're cool. Right. But as you get a little bit older, you know, being cool is not being broke. You know, the cool kids aren't broke anymore. They were not necessarily cool early on by standards, but they were smart, you know, and uh, you're going to spend more time in the later parts of your life, you know, hoping that you made the right decisions in the small little portion of your life. Those early 20s, that 20 to 30 range, that decade separates people tremendously. And uh, there's a very small portion of people that are wise enough and mature enough to start making decisions because it's tough when everyone else is going the other direction, right? Everyone else wants to go out and have fun and do things. And someone else is going, I'm going to stay and grind, right? I'm going to save my money and, and people will give you crap about those type of decisions. But trust me, 10 years, 10 years later, um, they are not, they're going to wish they could go back in time. I was one of them, right? I started too late making, um, I don't want to say too late, but boy, it would have been a lot different if I made those decisions earlier. Thank you. Yeah. Angel, you had a question too, right? Yeah. So I was very intrigued when you said that you're, you and your wife, um, 
I think in December, you said two to three days out of, out of December, you guys go out and go plan your whole year, whether it's finances, relationship goals, all of that. Yeah. Um, I was just very astonished by that because um, in some organizations I've run, we've had a retreat where we had to plan the whole year, but I never, ever thought of doing that for your life. Right. So, yeah. so yeah, I, I kind of wanted to get some, some more on that. Um, like how, how do you guys do it? Um, some things that y'all talk about. Um, that'd be, that'd be really cool. Yeah. We, 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 we there's, there's worksheets that we, um, that we use that just kind of help guide us through, you know, reflecting on the goals prior to, you know, evaluating what things did you accomplish? What didn't, why did you, why didn't you, et cetera. Right. Um, and then, you know, and then kind of setting out, okay, going through what categories do you want to put some focus in on this year and then within those areas. So the worksheets kind of help kind of lead the path. Right. Um, but I, I think it's important to kind of break away and get away and, and, and I, and, and to do it with other people this year, we actually, um, we, you know, brought in, I think eight or nine other people with us. Um, you know, we went to a kind of a cool place and there are people we work with. And so we wanted to kind of share with them what we've been doing for those years and kind of do, had a couple of days where we collectively plan things together in our business. And then a couple of days where we, you know, showed them what we do just individually. Right. Um, so I think, you know, that's great too. You, you get a couple of people to do that, but I think it's a good practice to have and right. And, it's, and, and granted, you know, breaks down to then setting goals monthly, weekly, and then daily, and they kind of build back up. But I think those are good habits um, to get into. You're just going to be a lot more effective, right? You're going every day. You're, you're, you're starting the day off with a purpose. And it's each day is those 30 feet of the headlights that, you know, day after day add up to next thing you know, you left New York in the beginning of the year, and now you're in California, right? So that that, you know, December planning is to go – where, you know, we want to be in California next year, right? And here's how we want that to look. And then, you know, it breaks back down. And when we get back, it's like, okay, now how do we break that down to what's our focus this month? And then break it into a week and then figure out, okay, how do I, what's the brick today that's going to lead us that that path, right? What things are you going to do? And, and like I said, so you just, you don't know the whole journey, but you don't, you just need to know today to figure out what you need to do tomorrow, right? So are, are you better tomorrow than you were today? What are you doing, right? So, you know, once again, things that, um, you know, I think you talk to anybody that's kind of deep in their career and they all wish they could kind of go back and go, geez, have I only started doing these things earlier, right? Um, and, you know, I think what you guys are doing is critical with the fact that every week you're bringing someone to the table. And for those that are here, you know, learning, um, plugging in every week is is important because it's kind of like when you're in high school right and the, the school brings in someone to talk about like drinking and driving and how you know years ago they lost their best friend in an accident and they were drinking and driving it really kind of rattles you right you get out of the auditorium you're like god i'm never going to do that again and then a week goes by and you totally forget the message and life just brings you back to normal and you go on making dumb decisions right um and it's because that you're not having enough rinse and repeating of things going over and over again. And the fact that you guys are doing this and they're setting this up every week and bringing someone on is important. I mean, think about church. Church happens every seven days. Why is it seven days, right? It's like we need to plug back into the mothership on a seven-day period because if we go too long without, we start to lose ourselves, right? For anybody that's religious or whatever and you know, finds a period of time where they haven't been separated from church, you start to feel like you're off a little bit, right? And that goes for anything, right? So I think you know, consistently plugging into something positive, whether it's learning, listening to an Audible book daily or reading daily or showing up to these type of learning events every week, um, it keeps you on that wheel, right? It keeps you from getting too far astray and making a wrong turn somewhere in your journey and getting lost and going, oh, I'm so effed and so far away from where I was, I'm just going to give up. It's kind of like, you know, that first year of me meditating, I, you know, next thing I look up, I'm like, geez, I haven't meditated in freaking three weeks. Well, forget that one this year, right? And I kind of just felt so, I was so disappointed. I failed. I got so off course, right? Um, and I realized I needed to do something to set that trigger every day. And that's where I modified what I was doing. So 
I think what you guys are building and you guys are coming to learn, knowing that you have an opportunity every week to kind of just get that refresher again and, you know, just get that kick and remember, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing or learn something new all the time. Um, you know, it's a good, it's such an incredible thing to have. And what you guys are doing, I think is, is fantastic, especially boy, the more people that you can continue to bring and those that are on it, like who can you bring next week to this, right? Because you get more people around the fire, then you start bouncing ideas off people and you find like-minded people and you start to build a community of people that, you know, are helping share ideas, inspire each other, connect different people, you never know, right? So it's like, who can you bring to the party and make this your, you know, your, your church, right? Uh, on a weekly basis, I think it's an incredible thing to do, right? Don't go uh, by, you know, you can go fast by yourself, but you'll go farther together, right? And I read that the other day and, and I every once in a while kind of remind myself, you go fast by yourself, but you'll go farther together. So bring people together, right? This is a cool thing that you guys got going and insulate yourself with other like-minded people, right? Remember I said, second thing I went over today is guilty by, you know, you're some of the five people you hang out with, guilty by association. So, you know, keep plugging in. I have a question. Um, so earlier you said um, to ask advice, five, like financial advice from five different people. And um, I, I don't know anything about finance. And I just heard someone say that keeping money in a savings account is dumb. <laughs> um, but... So like, let's say hypothetically, I had $25,000 in a savings account. What would you advise that I did with that money? Um, like I said, I think there's a lot of different outlets. I mean, putting some money into the, the market, stock market, is that's the first thing I, well, first thing I did, and, and probably different because where I am in life, right? Um, first thing I did is make sure I had 12 months of liquid cash to cover any my life expenses, right? And I think that's the first bucket most people would advise you to do is make sure you have money saved that you can have access to without taking out for as a penalty, right? So savings accounts, the thing is the problem is there's no savings account checking accounts that you're really earning any money at. You know, there's no interest on it, so very little. Uh, there, there is a company called Wealthfront that used to have a 2% return, but since COVID, that return has gone down. 2% is really high for uh, a, a, a cab, what they call a cash account, right? Uh, wealth funds like Robinhood of these days, right? But Robinhood's a great, you know, platform too. Um, you know, but I, so I think that's first is make sure you have emergency money for a, a bad situation, right? Most people don't have any savings. I mean, the percentage of people that don't have cash savings six months is like 90% of people don't have six months of their expenses, you know, tucked away. So that's the first bucket I think most people advise you to do. You want to get in the market, you know, the first things I got in the market is I just got different index funds like the S&P 500 and a Vanguard fund, right? That those are index funds that have, you know, tons of companies packed into it. I'm not a big person in gambling on individual companies because it, that, it's like going to Vegas, right? Um, it, it's very hard uh, to predict. And your best financial people like a Warren Buffett would just say, listen, the market historically over 100 years has beaten out any hedge fund or any investor over and over and over again, right? So um, just finding, you know, you know, investing into the S&P or, you know, Vanguard or Russell 2000 or NASDAQ or those type of things, um, long term is a great way to kind of put money there, right? Uh, but that's where I get with some people. Like, I'm not a licensed professional in any of those areas. Um, but those, you know, those are just the things that I've done that, that fit me where I am in my life and kind of what my investment strategy is for long periods of time. But um, after you have some, some reserve, um, yeah, keeping money sitting um, in a savings account, isn't, it's not working. You're not getting it to work for you. So find different things that you're also passionate or interested about, right? That your money can work for you, right? Um, and there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of different options out there. So I, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not giving you specifics, but I, not knowing your situation, not knowing you personally, um, you know, I think you got to, you need a little bit of that in substance to find out what's the best for your situation. But get your money to work for you. Sitting in a bank account um, ain't working for you, right? Try to, and try to be smart about, you know, not, that's a really bad, I mean, you know, credit card, geez, I mean, this credit card debt I was in young, and a lot of people are, right? Um, try not to, uh, try not to kill yourself in debt, 
you know, paying interest on debt can, you know, student loans. Like, yeah, I mean, that's another thing. I think if you've got, if you've got debt clear out, right, that'd be the first thing. Um, you know, Dave Ramsey's got great, if you ever heard of him, he's got great, you know, financial teaching for all ages of people. He'd be, you know, in, in, in really good principles. But there's a lot of people that you can learn that will teach you very much the same thing. I mean, today's day and age, people, and, and even it's like me, I'm giving you stuff that you can hear a thousand different people say the same thing, right? People are just repackaging and rewording the same basic principles on teaching, you know, different aspects. But, um, you know, the first, when we were, when we started to make some good money, First thing is paid off everything. We paid off our debt, right? Got rid of our credit cards debt. We paid off our student loan debt. That was the first thing. It's like, I'm not going to start putting money in stuff until I paid off the things I'm paying extra interest on. And then once we covered that, that's when we started looking at the buckets. We need a liquid bucket for emergency. We started to put a little bit of money in for our kids, you know, kids' college funds in our 529s. We started investing into the market. And we started to do uh, invest in a little bit of real estate. And then we started to do a little angel investing. And then we're continuing to touch those buckets. But there was kind of a first, second, third, fourth path before and how much we wanted in each bucket before we opened up another door. I don't want to work forever. No one does, you know. That's really great. And I do agree, Paul. You got to pay off all your debt before focusing on that. And I do have a question in terms of increasing the amount of pages you read in a book. Because in the past, I would read like 20 pages in one day, and then I wouldn't feel motivated to read until a few weeks after, or maybe even one month after. But recently, I came up with a strategy that has helped me much better, where I will dedicate one hour a day to reading just eight pages. And uh, after two weeks, I will come up to one and 12 pages. That doesn't mean that I read every single day. There are one or two days that I miss, but I'm more consistent now. So I feel like that strategy definitely improved my reading because I'm not reading too much in one day to the point where I don't feel motiv not motivated enough to continue reading. I feel yeah. more motivated now. And I wanted to ask you, do you have any strategies that can increase someone's reading in terms of keeping them more yeah, motivated? You bring up something I wanted to talk about too. Um, you know, and, and this is kind of pre-COVID, right? So um, the average person drives about 15,000 miles um, a year in their car, which is, equates to about 300 hours. If you didn't turn on the radio and you listen to audio, books, whatever, for any type of person development that would equate to a master's degree for free in, in, in leadership and development, right? 300 hours. Right. Um, and, and so sometimes just re-engineering the times you have and replacing stuff, right? Replacing maybe listening to the radio in the car. Uh, I, I used that, that 10, 15 minute shower um, as an opportunity to listen to stuff in the shower. Right. And I'll take one or two showers a day, depending if I'm working out or running around or whatever. Right. Um, car, you know, the cars. So, um, and reading before you go to bed, I, like I said, I suck at reading. Um, so I'm more, I, I like to listen, you know, so I will find times if I'm, you know, running around or exercising. Sometimes I listen to music because I just need, it's what pumps me up for what I'm doing, but I spend probably 30 minutes to an hour every day listening to something where I'm learning something, a book, a podcast, right? Um, there's a great book called the slight edge. Uh, written by Jeff Olson. And the whole book is about mastering the mundane. It's doing small things over long periods of time, whether it's a diet, whether it's exercise, whatever. And it just talks about these mundane principles that they're, they're easy to do, but they're easier not to do. But if you can get a habit of doing just 10 pages of a good book or 10 minutes of an audible every day, a year from now, how significant of a difference you'll be, right? You, you'll be at. If you, you know, stop drinking soda um you know in a year from now you do a different place if you walked for 20 minutes from a year from now you'd be a different place so it's 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 it, it it challenges this whole quantum leap the get rich quick scheme the quick fast 30-day diet right the get a six pack of abs in two weeks all that shit and people package it and continue to find people to buy into it but none of that crap ever works right the one thing that is true and, and, and holds true is doing something over and over for a long period of time 
You don't have to put hours in a day to something. Just doing something small day in, day out consistently, that compounding effect. Same thing you talk about money. You put a little bit of money away every month starting today, this month, and never stop putting 20 bucks in a month or 100 bucks, whatever you can afford. You will look back 20 years from now and go, I cannot believe it, right? You've got to look at those mathematic uh, you know, uh, you know, calculators and look at what 20 years investing a small amount of money you know, at 20 versus someone at 40 and how much more money you'd have with, with putting in a fraction. It's crazy. But that principle falls into any working habit that you do, right? So, um, so that's a good book. Um, and I think just, so finding those different times, Emmanuel, that you go, okay, sometimes it's not about, sometimes you're like, I'm just busy. And I don't have time. It's like, well, it's, it's just re-engineering things that you're doing. Start looking at what am I doing every day and how can I replace something with something more positive, right? Could I not watch, you know, a junk TV and maybe just listen to something, right? Um, can I get up earlier, right? Miracle Morning by Hal Alron is a great book and just talks about, you know, getting up an hour early, how much more you will conquer and kick the crap out of everybody by just getting up an hour early and starting your day a little bit before anybody else, right? Um, and, and so part of this working on you and learning and reading starts to uncover different, you know, habits and principles that you will start to, um, you know, build into your life that will, once again, kind of start changing everything, right? It's like the things that I'm figuring out good at today, I, I just learned from someone else. I am not original in coming up with anything of my own, right? Everything is just, I heard it from somebody else and I applied it myself. And, and then I tell the story on how I've seen a difference in me, right? Um, I'm a huge, huge Jim Rohn fan. Um, and not not the ESPN Jim Rome, but Jim Rome, who's you know uh, is no longer with us, but really the Godfather. He taught the Tony Robbins, the John Maxwells, the Robert Kawasaki's uh, of the world. He was really one of the originators of personal development and coaching, and built a very successful life. You know, traveling the world and and speaking like you know the people that we see today um, do. But, you know, everyone, you can hear, you know, Tony or any of those guys, they cite all their learnings back to their mentor, Jim Rohn. Um, he's got a, he's an incredible, um, he's incredible with words and explaining things. Uh, he's got an old grandfatherish, um, uh, you know, boy, I mean, just, I don't know, for me, um, there's no person that I could just listen to over and over again. And he trains on all aspects of life. So um, if there's like my favorite person to listen to. Um, it's a, you can find YouTube videos on him. You can download stuff on Audible from him. You can find his books. Um, he, is, he is by far one of my favorites. And so much of what he teaches has been offspring to so many of today's great speakers and motivators and all that stuff, right? It's like that Rise Up group, all those people there, you know, they, they, they're, they're delivering a, sl a sliver piece of his stuff, right? You want someone cool, up to date, fresh, with good style that I that I heard for the first time on, on on Rise Up is Jesse Itzler, who's married to Sarah Blakely, who created Spanx, and he started uh, um, Marquee Jets, which is bought by uh, Warren Buffett. He's part of uh, I forget the Coconut Water Company, uh, but he start first started writing raps back in the day with Beastie Boys and Yo MTV. I mean, he's just got a really cool style about him. So Jesse Itzler is a guy I've kind of followed since I've been on that rise up that I think is, um, he's got to be, he's not like the typical everybody else teaching the same stuff. He's got some freshness to um, life and how he coaches and trains people. I think he's really cool. Yeah, I, I you know, but everyone's different. I, I think he's a fresh perspective to the online coaching world that there's a thousand people um, selling the same packaged material, all good stuff. Um, but you know, sometimes it's nice to see someone kind of go a different direction with how they're teaching people. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm trying to think, uh, yeah, those are the couple that I wrote down. Anything else? I have a question. Fire away. You ready for mission? I'm ready. Yes. Okay. Um, so what I want to know is, um, did your 
family always support you in that aspect of you growing and everything? Yeah, you know what? I think I was very fortunate. I mean, I think there's probably a little bit of concern um, from my folks when I, you know, um, when I left the childcare world and, and next thing you know, they, what they chalked up, what I was doing is I was knocking on doors, selling stuff. I think they're like, and telling them a year from now, I'm going to be making six figures running my own company. I, I'm sure in the back of the brains, they hung up the phone and gone, he's gone effing crazy. You know, should we be concerned? He's all the way across the country. We don't, uh, we can't really financially help him. And how the heck does he leave with a college degree? And this is what he's doing, right? I don't think they really understand the path I was going. And so um, I'm sure they had concern. I think even later in the fact they told me they were concerned, right? Um, but I also think they're um, supportive and good in terms of letting us figure things out, right? And, and you know, having some faith that they hopefully did a good enough job to teach us the right lessons and principles um, to make good decisions, right? But I got to imagine there was still a concern. As a parent, no matter how well you think you've set somebody, somebody up, you're going to have natural concern, right? Um, so now being a parent, I can only imagine some of the thoughts. And, and when I left Syracuse to move to California for college, I mean, I had, you know, some years of not, of getting in trouble and not having a good track record to have a warm, fuzzy feeling on their behalf that is he going to, is he going to, is he going to be alive, you know, a year from now? Are we okay with this? But I'm sure something I'll have to learn how to do as my kids get older is be um, okay with, you know, letting them go and figure it out. And, and whether it's kids or even in business, I, you know, I had to learn that um, working with people is to empower people and let them try things and, and know that they're going to mess it up, but that's the only way they're going to learn. Like you can't, control everything yourself eventually you're going to fill your cup and it's just going to overflow so you have to um, be able to empower and give people the opportunity to start figuring things out because someone did it for me someone let me fall all over my face and gave me responsibilities but you know um, hope that you know you'll learn through it and I think it's you know a lot of similar aspects of being a kid and being parented and being a parent and parenting is a lot of the same principles that you're going to get when you work alongside with people. And that'll be, you know, that was, that was a challenge. I probably didn't talk about that much, but just, you know, the different roles and industries I've been in, you, you mean, you, you're in industries where you're working with people, you're going to deal with a lot of people that are not like you, that don't think like you. And, and uh, that's a challenge is learning how to accommodate and, and remember, you know, what, what's the greater good and what are you trying to do? And um, 20 years into it, I still, um, I've got a lot of growing and learning to do um, and, 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 find, and are always kind of trying to improve on it, right? Just conflicts that you run into people that, are, you know, don't see things differently. And, you know, it's not always what you think. It's the perception of others that are around you that really is where kind of the reality is. Um, so anyways, not to, and I'm kind of veering a little bit off, off, off the question. Um, but uh, now I had friends that totally trashed what I was doing, right? Even when I started that endeavor in sales, I was living with two buddies from home that were like, what are you doing? You're crazy, you're drinking the juice. And uh, very few, if any of my friends I hung out with, um, supported me and didn't give me crap. Um, and it was tough, right? It was tough to go against the grain. But part of it was also going... Um, I may be going in the right direction if, if, if I'm kind of solo or there's not a lot of people going in this direction, right? It's like in business, it's kind of like, you know, if I'm in the minority, I'm probably more times than not actually in the right spot. So, uh, but it wasn't easy. I missed out a lot of things. I saw my buddies go out and have fun, you know, on the weekends when we live in Huntington Beach and Newport Beach at that point, and they were going down and having a blast on Main Street and I had to go work. Right. I work on Saturday and sometimes even having to put some extra hours on Sunday. And that sucked because I love having fun and I have FOMO and I don't want to miss out on things, especially because I was like the whole reason we moved to California from New York was like, we want to go have a great time as young, you know, ex college guys and go live it up. Right. And uh, I early on got caught up in a career that was really a godsend for me to get me focused early on and start learning how to be a business owner and entrepreneurial and grow as a person and, you know, set, set me on a path, but it wasn't easy. It's not easy, you know? Um, and it's too bad that when people are trying to do something significant, they're usually going against the grain and there's 
Uh, you have to learn how to have confidence in yourself um, and how not to get too caught up and get talked out of things, right? Uh, and I think that's important. That goes back to choosing who you spend time with and who, who you're getting influenced by, right? A lot of people take advice from people that are in situations that you don't even really want to be in, right? So I had to kind of remind myself going, I'm getting, you know, dogged by some of my buddies, but at the end of the day, do they have what I want? I'm like, no, I don't want their situation. So I'm not going to take advice from someone that doesn't have something that I want, right? I'm going to take advice from people that are in a position where I want to be in. And it's funny how the advice is drastically different from those two groups of people. So I had to separate that these are my friends and they will still be my friends, even though they're dogging me and I will go have fun with them. But when it comes to life decisions and all that stuff, I got a different group of people I'm going to hang out with. Right. So, and I, I don't, I haven't lost any of those friends. I just know what I get from that relationship. Right. I go to those relationships for different things. But it's it's hard to be successful without having haters. You're always you're gonna have it. You know, one way or another, you're gonna have people that are you know questioning you, down you, telling you you're doing the wrong stuff. And uh, I, I I think that's inevitable. It's par for the course. Does that help? Yeah, I, I think that's a uh, oh go for it, BD. I said thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? <laughs> I was going to say, uh, yeah, it, it's, it brings up the, um, the concept of, you know, you have to show up for your own success, you know, and the, the very fact that, you know, the people that logged on here are here right now, it's amazing, you know, yeah. uh, the questions that, you know, you're able to have right now, you know, I know Cruz is here, uh, Sahara is here, Julian, uh, Christopher, um, I don't want you guys to like go home uh, at the end of this uh, empty handed, you know. Um, so ask your guys as questions if you have one for sure. Put the pressure on them, Alexis. Just a little bit, you know, I, I don't want to, uh, <laughs> the values just fly away. Yeah, know? if the opportunity's there, I get it. Yeah. So what yeah. stocks would you recommend that we invest in? Oh, I, like I said, I, I don't, I don't really, I don't invest in any individual companies, right? I'm more just in index funds um, that, you know, that embrace a ton of different companies. And that's mainly because I'm not that sophisticated or have the time to really sit and dig in and understand what's behind these companies, what's going on. It's way higher level than me, right? That's not my profession, but I also understand that just the, the historical trend of the market and how it grows overall typically will beat out any other investment firm. I think Warren Buffett, and I think this is in the book Unshakable, I think Warren Buffett bet the top um, um, investment firms in the US to compete against the market's own growth over 10 years. And the market was, you know, uh, was, you know, like a 35% growth return over that decade. And the, uh, the top investment funds were like an average of 28%. So um, even the smartest of people, you know, that do it, sometimes just can't predict. And it doesn't mean that people are beating it up, but you know, I, I'm putting in money for the long term and the market long term um, and those index funds can do me a hell of a lot more money than I need if I just consistently invest money uh, for the long term. So I put it in, I set it and I forget it. Now, do I watch like CNBC to know what's just kind of going on in the market and understanding you know how things are affected? Yeah, but even there's some, I mean, listen, I don't, I don't let me lie and not say that I wish I could go back to February and take in a second, you know, as we knew COVID was coming and go, Hmm, I wonder how things are going to change and who's going to be the upside of this. Like, you know, DocuSign and Zoom and, you know, Facebook and Amazon and, you know, who even thought Tesla would be where they are. Right. And all these different companies that, you know, you know home improvements and, you know, people doing house projects. I mean, think about all the stuff that people are doing now because of what's going on. Right and go, geez, why didn't I do that? But in these index funds, I'm catching a lot of those gains anyways, because some of those companies are part of that index already. So I'm getting it, I'm just not putting my eggs in one basket, uh, because as much as you may catch a couple good wins, you're gonna get some losses with it too. So I'd rather pay much more of a broad stroke and just take everyone's overall gains and losses through it. And like I said, just historically over 100 years, the market's always shown to kind of win over anybody individually and any individual company, right? Just companies and people, we go up and down, right? And it's too hard to predict when they're going to 
you know, it's easy to look back and go, oh, why well, should have invested in a Netflix? You know, it's like, yeah, you, you, but did you really, did you think when you, the shit was hitting the fan with COVID that, you know, you were thinking on that level, like, oh, I mean, I was even going, I don't even know what's going to happen to the market overall, right? The market could just be crushed for years. Like no one really knew, but yeah, does it make sense looking back on it? Of course, anybody can be a smart investor looking back or going into it, right? You know, you got to have some kudos to, uh, to make some of those bets and I don't need to, you know, there's a safer way of doing it. So, but my advice is, uh, you know, educate yourself, get with people that know what they're doing. You know, that book Unshakable is a good book. It's on Audible. Uh, it's a good book. It's good basic principles and just understanding a little bit of how fees are in the investment world and how much money gets eaten up by fees when you, you know, have investors and, you know, active managers touching your money and a lot of people like just like to give money and think it out of sight out of mind but don't realize um the significant percentage of their money that they'll lose in paying commissions and fees out over 30 or 40 years kind of scary you know some people lose 30 40 percent of what they could have um you know just in fees and loss of of that compounding growth so that book really opened my eyes a little bit about okay i got to be very if i am going to get someone to guide me um, financially, I got to get someone who's got my best interest, which I was lucky. I have an older brother who has always been very successful in, in understanding the market too, who's really kind of who I go to for the advice. And he's very plain Jane and vanilla and makes safe long-term bets. And, uh, you know, don't be wild and risky. You don't have to, right? Um, you know, put in what that goes back into, and you know, invest in yourself. You're the best investment you got, right? So you invest in yourself to make the money and then put it in the safe places to get good returns. I have a question. Um, so the um, programs that you're working with, the Jason um, Stim Bates? Yeah, I, think, can. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry about that. But yeah. um, do they tell you what they're doing or you're basically like, hey, here's the money? And oh, yeah, no. Yeah, no, they, they do all their vetting. I mean, a lot of these companies, they have in an incubator or an accelerator program they're working with for weeks upon weeks. Um, and, uh, you know, and then I, I'll go and see, I'll go be on and watch the companies and their, their founders pitch their business. Um, I'll see everything, right? They, but that's, I, I give them, they take a fee of any investment because they have a massive team of people that are looking at thousands and thousands of companies a year and investing in finding the best hundred or however many, they, they, they try to average a hundred a year. Um, and in that hundred, I'm trying to figure out what couple of them that I think would be good. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, they're doing, people, dirty right? work. What's they, that? Oh, you do your own work. So it's like, they here's do the dirty work. Oh, they, they do, do their dirty work. Yeah. And so then, you know, typically I'll get an email, um, about a deal, uh, that they have with a company and I can go and schedule to listen to their webinar and I can read up on all their financials and their, you know, how they've grown and where they're at and what they're doing. And, you know, um, they do a great job of kind of showing the good and the bad and showing you what's their competitive advantage and what's their potential challenges they're going to, you know, uh, deal with. And, and then from there, I make a decision on whether I'm like, Hey, I want to put a little bit of money into that company and see what happens. Right. Um, I, it's very few and far between that I do. Um, and even if I do, I'm usually taught my brother was a part of the syndicate for years and has made a lot of investments. So I usually just go to him too. I'm like, Hey, this seems cool, but you have a way better understanding of this technology of this industry, right? Cause most of these people, these companies are in, are in the tech industry, um, and software and, and I don't, I don't know it that well. Right. But once again, I'm not like, this is so a later down the road investment bucket. Like it's like, you know, it's like going to Vegas. It's like, if you can't lose it, don't show up to the table. Um, so it's, it's my, dad. I'm like, I, I don't, if I don't, if I don't see a penny of it again, that's fine. Right. And I typically, I mean, his book will even teach you, you know, you'll invest into 30 deals of which 27 of them, you will lose your money completely. Two of them, you may make a little bit of return and one could be a home run but be prepared to lose. And most people that start angel investing will lose, you know, their first five, four or five or 10 investments and get nothing. And the companies will crash and burn and they'll lose their stomach for and go, I don't want to waste my time in here anymore. 
It's a long-term game. It takes a lot of years and it takes a lot of deals to maybe catch one that could really pay you a significant amount. And that's not even a guarantee. So it is not, I would never encourage someone um, to be a first bucket of entry to invest, but later on the road, it could be something fun to, you know, it could be something fun to do. It's, it, it's a hobby. I, I really kind of, I'd say it's a, you know, people that have a lot of money will do different things for hobbies, buy boats, buy airplanes. You know, you have to look at this as this is a hobby. Um, don't expect a return, but you play it with the hopes that, Hey, maybe I, maybe I catch a, you know, the next com.com or the next Uber or, you know, the next Airbnb, you know, and it's easy to go, well, I would have invested in that when you got started. It's like, nah, pump the brakes. You know, if, if someone explained to you Uber in the early days where we were, you're like, what? Random people are going to drive people around or you're going to just go live in and rent other people's homes. That seems really weird, right? Like every concept that today is normal. I mean, go back to buying something online with eBay and Amazon, right? Like, you know, you go back far, you guys are probably too young for, to even think about that. But I remember even going, who the hell is going to buy a shirt on? You can't even try it on. Like, who would buy that online? Right? Now, today's world's totally different, right? So if you're, you're betting on things that seem so crazy and there's like no way and, uh, you know, and some of them will find a way and some of them won't. The likelihood is most of them will fail. A majority, 95% of them will, will flop. So it's a gamble. Like I said, my my motivation mainly is to learn and hear what's going on, and I I, I like to learn. Like any anybody I'm ch chatting with, I like to. Even when I was talking to these guys, uh, I wanted to know like why they got started, what drove them. I, I'm, I'm I'm very curious about what people do in their jobs and in their industries. Um, one is just to being a curious person, but two is um, I like connecting people, and 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 just the more I can learn and understand about people. I, I'm a big person of connecting people together if they can complement each other in business or opportunity and that type of stuff. I don't know. I don't know why I like doing that, but you know, um, I, once again, it's providing value. It's that whole thing of like, how can I help someone else out and not necessarily for any type of return, but I just, that karma of keep doing good things for other people, helping people out, you know, just, it, it'll, it always comes back some way or shape or form. One of you guys is, could come up, and, 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 and found an unbelievable company that one day could affect me or my family, right? So this call in some way, shape or form could have some sort of chip where money guys, you know, does something incredible and it, and it affects something in my world, right? Um, and I think that's the fun part of waking up every day and just, you know, going, hey, what, what can happen, right? Yeah. Thank you. I like where you guys are. I mean, a lot of your questions are focused on investing and that's good. You're thinking smart about your money, right? But start small, start, you know, just start with some basics, get your fundamentals down. But the fact that you're actually even thinking about that, you're way ahead of where I was when I was, you know, your guys' age. I was like, what, what's the first car I'm going to buy? Well, I want some kick butt car, right? And I did. I took all the cash I had and I went and bought a BMW and like a 21 year old, you know, and, I was thought it was the coolest thing in the world, but you know, once again, it was a car that you can get at any point in time. I wish I would have taken that money and put it away. What else? Who's got a business idea? Who's working on something right now? Is anybody kind of in the process of starting a business or in the midst of, you know, putting uh, running a business or anything? Any ideas? Oh, um, well, actually, my dad, he wants to, uh, he wants to start a sweatshop business. It's been, um, I guess, uh, we've talked about it, and um, and he's mentioned, oh, like you know, he wants to go see some, um, uh, some spots where, uh, where, where he could possibly, um, uh, cause we have sewing machines. It's a little bit yeah. of a mess, but yeah. I guess I'll, I'll show you. All right, hold on. How do you? You probably, I mean, obviously, you know, right now with the amount of businesses, unfortunately, that are not going to get through COVID, commercial yeah. real estate is probably going to be at a at a pennies to the dollar type of opportunity. So you can probably find some cheap space. Yeah. Uh, people are, you know, out of their leases or looking to fill. Yeah, like, um, and I've been trying to help them. That's not like I've been trying to learn about like how to run the business when it comes to um, 
uh, the, the employees of uh, the machines when it comes to either buying them or renting them, um, the rent, really like, like every little bit of information because like my dad, like he knows about business, but sometimes, uh, you know how sometimes you, there's those moments where you act like an impulse, you know? Like yeah. You buy, yeah, like you overbuy merchandise, you overbuy yeah. things, and it, it, and it's not it's not bad, you know. But said you have that inspiration, and you have like you know that's what runs you, you know. And since then, like oh well, like this idea, like oh I'm gonna do this and that. But at the same time, like sometimes you don't take a pause and think about okay, well, like you know, kind of how is it gonna work out, you know. But listen, so, yeah. you guys are, you guys are, you, you, it, when you're young, you have the flexibility to fail. I mean, you got to fail your way to the top anyways. Yeah, so exactly. try as many things as you can. And every one of those experiences, don't worry about if you win or lose, worry about what you learn from it, right? Because in your yeah. early years, the more experiences you can get, whether you make money at something or you lose your little investment, it's all about gaining knowledge, right? Early on, yeah. right? And, yeah. and so that's really important is don't be afraid to try things and who cares if you fail. Most people's success wasn't their first crack at it, right? It was their 10th idea as a reiteration, right? Of something they did before over and over again. So I think it's important to try as much stuff, put your stuff and learn as much. The other thing I'm a really big proponent of, especially early on is be an apprentice somewhere, go work for free with somebody. If you want to get into a certain industry and get good in industry, Go spend six months and find someone's unbelievable and say, listen, I will work for free, which most people are like, I'm not gonna let you do that. But go in there with a humble attitude of, I will, I just want to learn from you for six months at no cost, right? You may save yourself a lot of money in the long run, just going, Hey, I want to go into an already operating, you know, sweat shop. And I want to say, can I, can I spend three months here just learning every facet of this from ground, from every position I want to just, I want to watch and model and learn, right? That knowledge will will, make, will be so much more worth the years of cutting your elbows up and doing that too. And I don't think a lot of people, especially in your early age, think about that experience and that knowledge and are more just like, I need to get a paycheck, right? I need to get paid. How am I going to get paid? I'm like, listen, if you get paid in experience and mentoring by someone, that is going to have way more of a positive effect. So um, I'm a big proponent of find someone to be an apprentice under. Uh, and learn the ropes because you also may figure you also may learn to go I don't want to do this right and at least you save your time and save your money you know not having to you know get into a point where then you get stuck and you go I, I need to keep doing it, even though I don't want to do this anymore right so go test the waters hang out with different people in different professions offer your services for free um, you know and, and and buy your way into like another thing you do is that you know you have money alexis you got two grand and if you have an idea you want to go into go take someone out to lunch that's great in that area i'm a, a big fan of like hey find people buy someone a coffee buy someone lunch for their time right come in with some questions learn from other people and the things they've done you being on this call you're getting opportunity to learn from a variety of different people every week for free right that's incredible and continue doing that but also don't be afraid to um, you know offer your services for free um, pay someone for their time um, you know it's just working smarter versus harder right like you don't need to bang your head against the wall right you got to learn how to cheat um, from everybody that's already kicking butt be incredible at that right mm -hmm. that's for you yeah. wonderful and um, yeah. Alexis I believe you have something to present yeah, so um, I'm gonna have to hop on, um, hop off in a bit, but uh, I did want to give you guys an update um, on what what we have right now. Um, so right now the company is uh, about to launch a two week challenge where we're gonna hold people accountable to something that they want to accomplish, something you guys want to, you know, it's it doesn't have to be big, you know, within two weeks. Um, it's, it's something where you're actually able to implement these skill sets, um, and you're actually putting it into practice. Um, you know, we already have a couple of people on the list. It'll start soon. Um, but yeah, this is coming soon. Does anybody want to, uh, come in to the first round? Cause essentially this is going to be a paid for event, uh, later on, but the first wave is going to be free. So does anybody want to uh, get on the list? Samantha, Crystal, 
Cruz, Julian, Christopher, um, you know, do are, are you guys, um, do you have a goal in mind uh, that you, you kind of think, hmm, maybe I want to do that? Hmm. Think about one of the daily habits, right? Think about one of the daily habits maybe I went over and just try to practice, you know, meditation or practice gratitude or practice exercise or practice writing your goals down or, you know, I know these are just trying to make, give you some ideas, but. Yeah, well, we got, uh, we got Sarah on. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. Uh, Sahara. Sorry about that. Sahara. Um, th would anybody else like to join? Let's see. Uh, oh, Sahara, I'm going to contact you on LinkedIn for that. So definitely. Perfect. Sahara, so um, Emmanuel, you, you know Sahara, you got her on? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so Emmanuel will hit you up. Cool. Take uh, the awesome. challenge. Awesome. For sure, Let's no problem, Sahara. Uh -huh. Yeah, I also um, did want to, oh, never mind, go ahead. No, go for it, go for it, go for it. No, I was just going to close, but if you had something else to add. Um, no, 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 I was, I was just going to, I just wanted to, uh, go more on um, if, if you guys had any questions about it, because sometimes, you know, you want to learn a little bit more on it, um, you could ask right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you were saying, Angel? Yeah, so um, it seems like there's no questions at the moment, so let's go ahead and move forward. And I'd like to definitely thank Paul for coming on and, you know, thank sharing you, his um, golden nuggets with us um, again like uh, we did record the video so we're, we're gonna send it over to you Paul and okay, um, okay. and yeah we'll definitely start we'll cut it up to some clips too um, that are shorter and very specific golden nuggets and we'll send them your way as well awesome uh, guys thanks for having me I mean I, I love what you guys are doing like I told you earlier I think this is great and everyone in time it's encourage you to keep bringing more people to this because um, you know you're bringing value you're getting value uh, I think what you guys are doing is fantastic, and I'm just uh, very appreciative to be a part of it. So, um, you know, anytime in the future, I'm more than happy to jump on again and, and be a part of what you guys are doing. So, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. And I also want to give a special shout out to um, every single person who hopped on board. Um, you didn't have to hop in today on a Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. And Paul, even like around um, 10 p.m., right? You hopped on at 10. Yeah, I'm working the minute. I'm in tomorrow already uh, over here, right? <laughs> he's Friday already in the he's three already minutes in time Friday. travel, man. Wow, yeah. Um, yeah, but um, like I said, not everyone um, was able to make it today or chose um, to come. So a special mm -hmm. thanks to everybody who is choosing to invest into themselves because at the end of the day, um, luckily we were able to uh, find Paul and he wants to give back to people and it's amazing to – I'll be plugged into a network, um, definitely. So, uh, yeah, thank you all so much. Um, let's go ahead and close, and hope you all have an amazing night. Have a great week, everybody. Good night, guys. Thanks for your time. Awesome. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Peace, peace.